able to automate the test case and uh, leverage the lambda test grid in order to execute your test cases uh i will i will now be demonstrating that how a user can do that so first of all uh, i'll take you to the automation dashboard so just next to real device it says automation and uh, here we do have two options that says web and op and app automation if we just click on web automation this is the page on which uh, we will land uh, a few options that i again see here that in case i want to uh, you know see a different screen instead of seeing all the tests in case i want to see builds i will be able to see that in case now i want to search for any of this information or i want to further segregate this information based on build name and build id i'll be able to do that and in order to further narrow down the filtrations i can use this configure option just make the selections and you will be able to see this information accordingly now we see the test cases that uh, were executed uh, here but how exactly uh, we see this information so for that i'm just going to take you to uh, my test ng uh, project uh, all right so this is this is uh, a simple uh, you know test ng project that uh, i've created uh, i can see the scripts listed on the left hand side uh, if i just uh, click on any one of them i can see this information here now in order to use this script and uh, leverage uh, lambda test grid in order to execute this test cases uh, we need to integrate uh, with the lambda test grid first so in order to do that it's a two step integration i would say where a user needs to pass in few information few pieces of information first of all is the string hub uh, which in case of web automation it will be hub.lambdatest.com for mobile it will be different but we will be talking about that part once i will be covering the mobile part but for web it is going to be hub.lambdatest.com then we need to have the username and the authentication key i already showcased to you that we can get this information by clicking on this key icon i'll be able to copy the the username and the access key from here and then i can just pass this information in my test script though the place where you are passing the username and the authentication might be different but it's just that we need to pass this information here so this was the first part the second part is the capabilities that we need to pass on that these are the capabilities that we need for this uh, test case to be executed to execute this test case successfully and uh, so how we get these capabilities in order to see and generate the capabilities i'll take you to uh, the capabilities generator so this is the url for the capabilities generator of lambda test so once we are on this page uh, we can see that we can select different options like language frameworks the tools on which uh, you know for which we want to create the capabilities for so since this is web automation i'm going to select tool as selenium whereas in case of app automation it will be apm uh, for my instance i'm using java as language because this is the test case that uh, i've you know created in uh, uh, you know in in in, in that language and the, the framework based on the requirements i can select whether it needs to be java j unit test ng or anything else that i want to select so based on the selections i can see that the capabilities are also changing accordingly now uh, since the tool is selected as selenium i can select the version as selenium 4 or 3 for which i want to create the capabilities and uh, just uh, under selenium i can see that i can configure the capabilities as well let's say instead of chrome 133 i want to execute the test case on a different version or on a different browser so i can just uh, expand these options i can select the uh, browser and the version accordingly and i can see the information changing on the right hand side accordingly as well i can see that the now uh, uh, you know the browser version has changed to 130 instead of 133 similarly i'll be able to see and change the operating system the screen resolution the selenium version that i want to execute this test case on and uh, the other options in case i want to pass this information regarding the build name or the project name i will be able to do that plus uh, there are few other options like in case i want to capture the screenshots 
I can just do that. And uh, one of this option or the capabilities that says visual true is now generated. Similarly, in case I want to record the videos, I can enable this option and video true capability is now generated. Uh, so there are a few other capabilities as well. So just play around with the capabilities. Uh, just use the capabilities per the requirement. Once the things are properly set, you can just copy these capabilities and uh, go back to the project and you can just paste these capabilities here. Similarly, I can see that, uh, you know, in case of screenshots, the visual is true. In case of video, the visual, the video is true as well. Now, in case I want to have the device logs, uh, we do have the device logs capabilities, which we need to set as true. And uh, in case I want to have uh, the performance metrics as well, which is supported in Chrome browser for all the, the Windows operating system and uh, for Mac operating system, it is available on Big Sur, Mojave and Catalina. So you can just enable uh, the performance capability as true. Once we have the capabilities in place, we need to get the driver ready. And uh, for that, we need to pass this information for the remote web driver, which is going to be the username, which we have already passed, the authentication, the hub, which is, uh, you know, hub.lambdatest.com and the capabilities. So once we have all this information in place, uh, you know, in, 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 in the script, we can then execute this test case. So let's say I want to execute it and I hit the execution button. I can see that it's now being executed. And if I just go back to the test page, just hit refresh. I can see the test is now being executed. So in case it's a single test, uh, I'll only be able to see a single test here. In case there will be multiple tests that I will be running, I'll be able to see all that information here. On the right hand side, I can see the configurations that I've selected, uh, who exactly ran the test case, and uh, since it's running at the moment, so time taken is not applicable in this case. Below that, I will be able to see all the commands that are being executed in test, uh, you know, in this test case. I will let the test run, and then, uh, you know, once it will be done, you can further expand uh, these commands in order to see the further parameters, and uh, you will be able to see the information further. Uh, these commands will also have the screenshots readily available in case you want to download or see the screenshots, you will be able to do them as well. Uh, under logs, in case there will be any Selenium logs generated in this case, I'll be able to see that information. In case there will be any console, terminal or device logs, I will be able to see all that information under logs. Uh, in case there will be any network interactions of this test case, uh, I'll be able to see that information here. Under metadata, I will be able to see who exactly ran the test case, uh, the the you know the web driver part, how much time it took to execute the test case, and the other information. Under input configuration, I will be able to see all the capabilities that were passed uh, during this test case. And in case I want to, you know, further see this information or I want to just copy this information, I'll be able to do that. Under media. It contains a zip file which contains all the screenshots of this test case and the MP4 video, which I can download. Uh, under performance, uh, I'll be able to see the Lighthouse report, which is the Google Lighthouse report. So if you remember, I enabled one of this capabilities, which says performance, because of which I'm able to see this Lighthouse report. So it will further give you the information regarding the performance of this test case. And you can also download this information here as well. So this is how you can execute a single test case. But in case, since you see that I do have four test cases uh, available here, and in case I want to execute these test cases uh, parallelly, uh, we do have the parallel.xml file, which you can use in order to execute these test cases. Uh, so this information is available on our website in the knowledge base articles, as well as it's available on uh, Lambda test GitHub repositories. So you can just go to GitHub uh, and search for Lambda test repositories you will be able to see this information there as well. In case I want to execute this single test case on multiple configurations, I can use the desktop.xml file where I can define the different version and names of the browsers on which I want to execute this test case. Let's say I want to execute it on Firefox, Chrome, with different versions, and maybe on Safari as well. So 
this test case i will be execute uh, you know i will be able to execute on uh, different configurations as well so this is this is regarding uh, you know the web part now quickly talking about the app automation all right so quickly uh, first of all the url in this case so since uh, in case of web it is uh, hub.lambdatest.com but in case of mobile it will be mobile uh, dash hub.lambdatest.com so i'm just highlighting it for your friends so that in case you just want to see this information it is mentioned as mobile dash hub.lambdatest.com uh, similarly, uh, you will be able to execute the test cases, uh, you know, on on actual devices, on virtual devices, or on private devices. And for that, we again need to have the username and the access key in place. So once we have that information in place, we can again mention the capabilities. For that, uh, I can just come to the capabilities generator here, and then I can select tool as APM. Uh, pretty much the standard thing that you can select the uh, you know the the platform on which uh, you want to execute this test case, whether it's a real or a virtual device, the operating system, and the other information. So once once you have uh, this information in place, you can just copy uh, these capabilities and paste it in the project. We just need to ensure one thing here in case we are executing the test case in uh, you know you know in a real device. In that case, uh, we need to select the capability as true, where it says is real mobile. Whereas in case it's a virtual device, we need to select this capability as false. And in case if it's a private device, there are other things that we need to mention, like the device name should be there properly, uh, you know, as as the way it is there in uh, uh, you know in Lambda test. Plus, we need to have the UDID as well in that case. So if you remember, I mentioned about the app ID. So one of the capabilities says app ID. So this is the app ID here that I've mentioned here. And we can get this information from this part. If I just go to real device app testing once again, and if I just hit settings on any of this app, I will be able to get the app ID from here, which needs to be passed as one of the capabilities. So once we have this information in place, we just need to ensure that the username, the access key, and uh, you know the capabilities are passed. Once that is done, I will be then able to execute this test case. So once I do that, once the test case is executed, I can go to automation and app automation. So now I can see that uh, on the left hand side, I can see all the build names listed here. And on the right, I can see the tests that are being executed. If I just click on sample test Java, I can see that it was executed on a physical device, which was Galaxy S24 Ultra. And this is the Android version. Similarly, I'll be able to see all the commands uh, that were executed in this uh, case. And in case I want to see the screenshot or mark, any of this information as bug right away from here i'll be able to do that in case i want to see the logs just hit the logs button all the apm logs device logs or in case any sort of crash happened for this application we'll be able to see that information here similarly any sort of network interactions will be listed down here and uh, metadata will contain uh, you know some more information like the session id which you can actually use in order to get uh, this information via API call. So if you go to the API sections of Lambda test and uh, you want to, uh, you know, have all these uh, logs and commands uh, for this test case, rather than seeing it in UI, if you want to, you know, pull that information using an API, you can use the session ID in that case. Similarly, the application info, uh, which was the application on which uh, we tested, the input configurations and the media will be listed under uh, media, uh, you know, under 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 uh, metadata. Similarly, app profiling is something uh, that you can see because this test case was actually executed on a real device. 
So instead of just having, uh, you know, uh, the the part where where we can see that how the application behaved, we can also have the hardware components uh, that were affected uh, by by you know by that application, which will have that how much time it took to cold start uh, the application, uh, the hot startup time, the CPU utilization, and uh, the other information is listed here as well. In case you want to expand any of this information, you can just hit expand all. And then you will be able to further segregate the, this information and see that how exactly your application behaved and how it will be behaving once it will be launched to all the public. So this is how uh, you can uh, see the app automation. And uh, similarly, you will be able to run only single uh, test case on, uh, you know, on, 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 on different configurations as well. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, information that is again available on uh, our website as well as in GitHub for Lambda test. So just feel free to visit that information. And uh, in case you will have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us via support and uh, we'll be more than happy to help.